Hi guys, this is Ivy from Wompley here to show you how to fill out the Paycheck Protection Program form powered by Lendio to hopefully make things a little bit easier. Let's go ahead and get started. First, if you've already filled out an application for Lendio, please go ahead and click up here at the top where it says continue. If not, we're going to enter in a couple of pieces of information under where it says get started on your Paycheck Protection Program loan. First, you're going to enter in your business name, second, your first name, last name, email address, and your phone number. This is to make sure that they have a valid way to be able to contact you in case they do have any questions, comments, or concerns. After you filled out all of these basic pieces of information, please go ahead and click apply now. It's going to take a couple of seconds and it's going to either say welcome back or it's going to ask you to set some kind of a password. In my particular case, I've already been here, so we're going to go ahead and enter in the password and click sign in. Takes just a couple of seconds and it's going to say, let's go ahead and start your application. So go ahead and click where it says start your application. It's going to take you to a page that looks just like this, where it says, let's get you started on the right path. First, are you applying for your second PPP loan? Yes or no? In my particular case, I'm not. However, if you are, all you have to do is click yes. You're going to enter in your loan number and the total amount that you were funded for on the last PPP. After you enter in the correct information or you click no, go ahead and click next. After that point, it's going to ask you a couple of questions about your business. First, your business name. Second, your business address. Make sure that this is correct. It is going to be right there in the drop down to make things a little bit easier. If you have some kind of a DBA, in my particular case, I do. Wompley is our DBA, so we're going to go ahead and enter in the correct information into the correct box. Our business start day. It does ask for um, month, day, and year. Your business time. Go ahead and click the one right here in the drop down that's going to be the best for you. In my particular case, it's going to be an S Corp. Next, it's going to ask for your federal or state tax ID, also known as your EIN. Again, for the sake of this demo, we are using fake information just to make sure we can show you what it's supposed to look like and make things a little bit easier. Next, it's going to ask you for your industry. We're going to go ahead and click marketing con uh, consulting services, number of employees, including the owners themselves. Next, it's going to ask a couple more questions. First, has the applicant received an SBA economic injury disaster loan, also known as an idle loan, between January 31st, 2020 and April 3rd, 2020? If yes, go ahead and click yes, and it's going to ask you for the amount and the term details. If not, Go ahead and click no. If you did receive your economic injury disaster loan, go ahead and enter in that correct information. In my particular case, all I'm going to do is enter in a zero because I did not receive an idle loan. Next, it's going to ask you for your average monthly payroll. This is payments that have been made to individual contractors, 1099 employees should not be included in the average monthly payroll amount. 1099 entities are actually going to file separately. So. Average monthly payroll, if you're not sure how to enter that, just hold your mouse on top of this little question. It should be the sum of the payments with any compensation to or with respect to employees that is a salary, a wage, commission, etc. So our average monthly payroll in my particular case, let's go ahead and get that. The loan amount that we're going to go ahead and enter it says the maximum loan amount that you could qualify for. The loan purpose, if it's payroll costs, rent, mortgage, utilities, covered operations expenditures, covered property damage, covered work, protection expenditures, etc. In my particular case, I am only going to click payroll. However, please click everything that is applicable. After you fill out all of the buckets, make sure that they are correct and go ahead and click next. Give it just a couple of seconds to be able to fill out the information. It's going to ask you to fill out some business questions. So first, starting at the top and working our way down. Is the applicant or any owner of the applicant presently suspended, debarred, proposed for debarment, declared ineligible, voluntarily excluded from the participation in this transaction by any 
federal department or agency are presently involved in bankruptcy? In my particular case, no. Has the applicant, any owner of the applicant, or any business owned or controlled by any of them ever obtained a direct or guaranteed loan from the SBA, any other federal agency that is currently delinquent or has defaulted in the last seven years and caused a loss to the government? my particular case, we're going to click no. Is the applicant or any owner of the applicant an owner of any other business or have common management with any other business? Again, in my particular case, we're going to click no. Is the applicant, if any individual, or an, any individual owning 20% or more of the equity of the applicant presently incarcerated or for any felony presently subject to an indictment, criminal information, arraignment, or any other means by which formal criminal charges are brought in any jurisdiction? Again, we're going to go ahead and click no. Scrolling down just a little bit. Within the last five years, for any felony involving fraud, bribery, embezzlement, or false statement in a loan application, or an application for federal assistance within the last year, or for any other fel uh, felony, has the applicant, if an individual, or any owner of the applicant, been convicted, pleaded guilty, pleaded nolo contendere, or been placed on any form of parole? Again, my particular place, no. Is the United States the principal place of residence for all the employees of the applicant included in the applicant's payroll calculation above? I'm going to click yes. Is the applicant a franchise that is listed in the SBA's franchise directory? In my case, we're going to click no. Is the applicant a franchise? Again, we're going to go ahead and click no. Once you've verified that every single bubble has been clicked, we're going to go ahead and click next. And wait just a couple of seconds for us to move us forward. Next, it's going to ask us for owner information. Do you or any individual own 20% or more of the business? In my particular case, we're going to go ahead and click yes. What is your ownership percentage, direct or indirect? Enter in the percentage of ownership that you have over the business. Then again, go ahead and click next. It's going to ask you for your documents. So it'll ask you for identification for all owners, payroll reports. It'll ask you to submit your application to the lenders. You are required to, follow the, to provide the following. We'll go ahead and click next. At this point in time, it'll ask you for, you know, for you to upload identification and avoid a check. So identification is required for all owners, must be in full color, uh, color uploading ID, and voided check is required to continue through the application. So let's go ahead, we're going to put some information directly in here. So let's go into my documents. We're going to go ahead and click right here. We're going to say OK. We're going to go ahead and we're going to click right here. We're going to select the next item for us to be able to put directly in here. And then last but not least, it's going to ask us to um, upload a voided check. So go ahead, click on the information. We're going to go ahead and click right here. Open that up. We're going to upload that directly into the system. Make sure that we have that correct. Scroll down here. Make sure that you have everything correct right here in the system, that you have all of your information to the best of your ability. That's going to be your ID for the owner in question, front and back, and some kind of a voided check. After you've entered all of that information into the system, go ahead and click Next. After that point in time, it's going to ask you to upload your payroll. Based on your answers for the following, um, documents are going to be required to validate your payroll expenses. Your January 2020 blank statement, your February 2020 bank statement, your 2019 full tax refund must include every single page. Please choose and upload your documents that apply to your business. One is required. So you have the 2019 IRS Form 941, your 2019 IRS Form 944, or your 2019 Form W-2. So all we're going to go ahead and do is we're going to scroll down just a little bit. It's going to give you all of the different buckets that you're going to upload all of your information. So let's find our January 2020 bank statement. We're going to click Browse Files. Click on the appropriate one and press open. Next, your February 2020 bank statement. Browse your files. I already have these downloaded ahead of time. We're going to click open. Next, your 2019 full tax refund must include all pages. Go ahead and browse your files. Find it on your computer and click open. Make sure that you have all of your documentation ready to go and you're going to click check your requirements. Give it just a couple of seconds. 
oh that's right we're going to click our w2 make sure that you actually click the box next to one of these to make sure that you can upload that we'll give you again the correct form to be able to click on that browse your files find the correct file in question click open make sure that you verified every single one of your your uploads one two three and four click next it'll ask you to review your documents the more complete your documents are the faster your application can be processed You'll go ahead and click next again. After that point, it's going to ask you for to sign and submit consent. It's going to ask you a couple of questions. Starting with the top, by checking the boxes and completing the form and signing below, you make the following representations, authorizations, and certifications. One, the applicant was in operation on February 15, 2020 and has not permanently closed and was either an eligible self-employed individual, independent contractor, sole proprietorship, with no employees or had employees for whom it paid salaries and payroll taxes or paid independent contractors as reported on form 1099 MISC. We're going to go ahead and click yes. Current economic uncertainty makes this loan request necessary to support the ongoing operations of the applicant. Again, go ahead and click yes. The funds will be used to retain workers and maintain payroll or to make payments for mortgage interest, rent, utilities, covered operations expenditures, covered property damage costs, covered supplier costs, and covered worker protection expenditures as specified under the Paycheck Protection Program rules. I understand that if the funds are knowingly used for unauthorized purposes, the federal government may hold me legally liable, such as charges for fraud. Again, go ahead and click yes, and we're going to continue through the application. I understand that loan forgiveness will be provided for the sum of the documented payroll costs, covered mortgage interest payments, covered rent payments, covered utilities, covered operation expenditures, covered property damage costs, covered supplier costs, and covered worker protection expenditures, and not more than 40% of the forgiven amount may be used for non-payroll costs. If required, the applicant will provide to the lender and or SBA documentation verifying the number of full-time equivalent employees on the applicant's payroll as well as the dollar amounts of eligible expenses for the covered period following this loan. Again, go ahead and please click yes. The applicant has not and will not receive another loan under the Paycheck Protection Program Section 7A36 of the Small Business Act 15 U.S.C. 636A36. This does not include Paycheck Protection Program Second Draw Loans Section 7A37 of the Small Business Act. Click yes. The applicant has not and will not receive a shuttered venue operation grant from the SBA. Click yes, and we're going to scroll down just a little bit farther. The president, vice president, and head of executive department or member of Congress or the spouse of such person as determined under applicable common law does not directly or indirectly hold the controlling interest in the applicant with such terms as having means provided in Section 322 of the Economic Aid to hard-hit small businesses, nonprofits, and venues. Go ahead and click yes. The applicant is not an issuer, the securities of which are, is, are listed on the exchange registered as a National Securities Exchange under Section 6 of the Securities Exchange Act. Again, go ahead and click yes. I further certify that the information provided in this application and the information provided in all supporting documentation and forms is true and accurate in all material respects. I understand that knowingly making a false statement to attain a guaranteed loan from the SBA is punishable under the law, including under 18 U.S.C. 1001 and 3571 by imprisonment of not more than five years and or fine of up to $250,000 under 15 U.S.C. 645 by imprisonment of not more than two years and or a fine of more than $5,000 and is submitted to a federally insured institution under 18 U.S.C. 10014 by the imprisonment of not more than 30 years and or a fine of not more than $1 million. Again, go ahead and click yes. And last but not least, I acknowledge that the lender will confirm the eligible loan amount using required documents submitted. I understand and acknowledge and agree that the lender can share any tax information that I have provided with the SBA's authorized representatives, including authorized representatives of the SBA Office of Inspector General, for the purpose of compliance with the SBA program. Please go ahead and click yes. After that point in time, it's going to ask you for applicant authorization. So your first name and middle name, your last name, your birthday. Let's go ahead and enter that in. Applicant, whatever your gender is, 
your social security number. Again, for the purposes of this particular demo, we're going to enter in a set of false information to make sure that we can show you what this is supposed to look like. Your address. Make sure again that it's correct to the best of your ability. Your applicant title. And then it's going to ask you to certify a couple of things. That you have read the statements included in the form, including the statements that are required by law and executive order, that the applicant is eligible to receive the loan under the rules that are currently in effect, and that the applications submitted have been issued by the SBA, Small Business Administration. The applicant, together with its affiliates, is an independent contractor, self-employed individual, sole proprietor with no employees, is not a housing cooperative, is an eligible 501c6 organization or eligible destination. I will comply whenever a applicable with the civil rights and other limitations in this form. All loan proceeds will only be used for business related pr uh, purposes as specified in the loan. I understand that the SBA encourages the purchase to extent feasible of American made equipment and, and products. The applicant is not engaged in any activity that is illegal under federal or local law. Any idle loan received by the applicant of the small business between January 31st, 2020 and April 3rd, 2020 was for a purpose other than paying per, uh, payroll costs and other allowable uses. I have read and received the Paycheck Protection Program disclosures and by submitting this you agree to their um, uh, electronic record and signature agreement. Go ahead and click. I acknowledge and accept the terms of this loan. Make sure that you fill out all of the pieces of information on here. It'll ask you to make sure that you click I certify that before going through that entire set of processes. Scroll all the way down one more time. Make sure that it says sign and submit. You should be able to go ahead and click it. We notice that you listed your business and home address are the same. Confirm and submit. It'll take just a couple of seconds. It'll tell you you, su you successfully submitted your application. At this point in time, your lender is going to be directly in contact with you via email or via phone to be able to give you any additional next steps, follow up with any questions that they have. But as always, if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, feel free to reach out directly to us. We're always happy to help.